Hey guys, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Thursday at 1 o'clock, or a little bit after. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. Um, so, let me go ahead and just be sure that we are transmittalating over here on the other screen. Don't, it's not looking good. Hang on just a second. Let me see what we got. Let me see what we got. All right. Maybe it's, maybe it'll do it now. Here we go. There we go. All right, we're on. Yay! Okie dokie. I hope you guys are all having a great week, and we'll see who gets joined up. Uh, just full disclosure, I just completely and totally started my video over on Facebook and then realized it was Thursday, and so I should be on YouTube. Hey, Karen. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Denise. Appreciate y'all joining. Um, I, boy, I am really crooked. Let me see if I can straighten this up, because that's going to make us all seasick, isn't it? That's gonna make us all seasick. Hang on just a second. We're gonna see if we can fix that a little bit. Hey, Amy. Hi, Debbie. Appreciate you joining. And there we go, Elena. Hello. Okay, so <clears throat> today I'm going to give you another sneak peek of a bundle, a little sweet bundle. See what I did there? Sweet bundle from the new August to December 2020 mini catalog. It's called the Sweetest Time Bundle, and it is very cute and very sweet. It has a nice um, three-image candle set that I like a lot. Hey, Barbara. Hi, Christine. Hi, Faye. Hi, Stampin' Yama. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I totally started on Facebook, and I was, like, welcoming everybody. To that. And I said, and it's Thursday. Oh, because <laughs> I'm supposed to be on YouTube. So, yeah, we're batting a 1,000. Anywho, this is the bundle that I'm going to take a look at, and it's got this great die set called Sweetest Borders, and these two dies, one makes um, holly and pine boughs, and one makes peppermints, cut a wonderful border like this. When you use it, let me move this out of the way, when you use one of them, this is obviously the, um, the pine boughs and holly and that is the way it cuts like so and when you pick it up you have solid cardstock above it or below it and then you've got the edge of the foliage now let me show you what we had hey Brooke yeah I know I'm I'm really so sorry about that I confused you because I'm sure y'all had a notice Mary is live now on stamps and lingers on Facebook because, you know, you never get a notice unless I didn't mean to be there. But I totally didn't mean to be there. I meant to be over here. So thank you all for coming right over. I know, Karen, peppermints are perfect, which is why I used Pine Boughs and Holly. Now, here's the card I made using this set. Um, and this is not the card we're going to make today. It's close to the card we're going to make today. Um, what I discovered as I was making this is that I bit off more than I could chew for a video that is only supposed to be uh, less than an hour. It's not terribly difficult, but this is, this is actually, this front is kind of a case of the card that is in the catalog on page 21 when you guys get your catalogs in hand. Um, and I thought it looked fun, and I and I wanted to do it, and I realized shortly after beginning the piecing process that <laughs> we would never, ever get done if I tried to do this online. <laughs> yeah, I understand, Faith. I was in the wrong place at the right time, but the wrong spot. Yeah. Hey, Norma, I appreciate you joining. Hi, Carol. Yes, I landed at the wrong airport, Rosie. <laughs> exactly. So let me, I'm going to tell you how to make this, okay? This is, the first thing you do, this this is Mossy Meadow and Pear Pizzazz. And you cut this die twice. First with Mossy Meadow to create the bottom of your card. And then you cut it again in Pear Pizzazz. And when you cut it the second time, what I did is I left my acrylic plate on my platform and I picked up the uh, the die, and so all of the paper and was stuck to the platform, which was fine. And then I took some uh, the seal, press and seal, uh, you know, cling wrap stuff, the press and seal stuff. And I stuck the sticky side down there and picked the whole mess up. 
and then I picked up just this piece, which left all the negative die cuts, okay? And then you use your tweezers and your liquid glue, and you painstakingly place all of those die cuts back in their little negative spaces. It is not hard. It is a little persnickety, and it certainly takes a little bit of time, okay? So, this is not a card you're going to make 12 of and mail out, or 30 of. You're gonna, these are going to be one-offs because it's a labor of love, and it's going to take you a hot second to do it, okay? But it's easy peasy. You just stamp your, your candles, and then you adhere the mossy meadow piece to the bottom of that panel, and then you do your paper piecing with the pear pizzazz version. Really, actually pretty darn easy. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a conglomeration of this card because what I really want you to see is how to make a Dutch door gate card. Okay, and my friend Rosie did this on her uh, the other day. She posted it on our team Facebook page, which was cool. Hi, Susan. Hi, honeybee. Appreciate you joining. And uh, I liked it, and so I copied it blatantly, but I turned it. Hers was a portrait, and I wanted mine as landscape. So this is how this opens. It's got a little double Dutch door. How many people would like to have a Dutch door in their house? I would love to have a Dutch door in my house. I think they're really, really cool. They're certainly very Martha Stewart-ish. You can, you know, decorate them and leave it open and probably put a pie or something on the sill and have it be... Um, cooling, but I think it probably wouldn't work so great in Georgia unless you just love sharing your house with every bug in the South, which is what it would be. But I, it's a great idea. So I decided to make it into a card. All right. So I'm going to show you how to make this card because it's not very difficult. It's just a couple of um, cuts. And then we're going to decorate it. And that's where the I don't know what it's going to turn out looks like. But what's kind of fun about this is I did make this so it will actually fit into an A2 size card. Okay? Or envelope. Sorry. Hi, Daryl. Appreciate you joining. Okie dokie. Now, let's go ahead and get started. I've got everything cut. And I have made a template that I will put a picture of on the blog tomorrow. Basically, you're going to start to make this in... Uh, landscape mode, you're going to start with a seven and a half inch by 11 inch piece of cardstock. And then you're going to do some cutting. The ones that I saw online, they started, they had two pieces of cardstock. They had this center section, and then they had a two inch wide strip that was 11 inches long, and they adhered them together. And, and I just didn't like that. And so I, I sacrificed a lot of pieces of printer paper and came up with how to do this with one piece of cardstock. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do right now. And I'm gonna pull out my handy dandy trimmer. And I'm going to attempt to remember which one scores and which one cuts, just saying. Okay, so follow along with me, if you will. I'm going to first off put the left side of my cardstock uh, with the long side at the top. I'm gonna put it at two and three quarters and I'm going to score all the way down like so, okay? Then I'll flip it. Obviously you could put the arm out and, and just slide it down, but this works just as quickly and easily. Put the left side again at two and three quarters, okay? And then I'm going to turn it and put one long side or the other, really doesn't matter which one, at two inches. So if you looked at the template, um, you will see that where we're at now is we're making this line, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going, I have two inches and I'm going to fold to the first score line. And then from the bottom up, I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to score to the first score line and then I'm going to come up and score to the bottom score line, okay? I know that made complete and total sense, but uh, it's about to, okay? So I'm going to come down and I'm going to put this little marker right here at the two and three quarters line, or just line it up with that score line like that, okay? And actually, in fact, I could cut that, but I'm going to score it for now just because it helps to kind of get a visual of what we're doing, okay? And I'm gonna leave it like that. You'll just have to, you'll just have to look at the bottom. The bottom, the bottom, the bottom. I think you can still see it here. Let me move this up. 
so you can see. There you go. So I'm back at two inches, and I'm just going to score up to that first score line like that. Okay. So can you see what we've done? Yeah, I think you can see it. We've got no, no score lines in the center. I've got a score line at two inches up to two and three quarters and from and two inches up to two and three quarters. Now I'm going to get rid of these tall pieces here by cutting. Okay. So we're going to, let's see, I think we'll go from the bottom. That's just a little, a little easier back to the two and three quarter inch line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up to here to the two inch mark. You probably can't see that, but I promise you that says two inches. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up to the two inch mark like so. And then let's go ahead and just do the other side and we'll get the score blade at the top and go to two and three quarters over here. And then I'm going to score, I'm going to cut down to really what is the eight and a half inch mark. No, that's not eight and a half. That would be, I can't even see. I can't even see. It would be five and a half. Okay. Or you can just line up with that score line that you made, whichever makes you happier. Okay. Now, I'm going to put the cardstock in one more time, a one more time. And I'm going to put the left side at two inches. And I'm going to cut to the score line slash my first cut line. Just like that. Okay. And that takes that piece away. And then we're going to repeat on the other side. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and put the score right in the middle, which is at five and a half over here, just so that it's up at the top so you can see a little easier. And I'm going to bring it down to match up with that score line there. You, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little mark on the trimmer here that tells you where the blade is. So I've just lined this little mark up with my cut over here or with two and three quarters on the other side. Just depends on which makes you more comfortable. And there we go. So there is our template, okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this fold right here. And you'll see it's not quite a half, okay? It's actually three and a half inches from the top of the card down. So I'm going to place this back in and I'm going to just keep everything lined up. You see the three and a half inch mark here? Three and a half inches over here, down here. And then I'm gonna take my score tool. It's a bad place to use the cutting tool when you didn't mean to. And I have scored my card. Okay. So now we can set this aside. And now you have the base for a Dutch door gate card. Hi, Julie. Sorry you were having a problem getting in, but I was having a problem getting on the right spot. Hey, Sue. Hey, Roz. All right. So now it's a, just a matter of doing some folding and a little bit of burnishing with my on bone folder. Okay. And I like doing it like this. It's a little more complicated cutting, but it keeps the, you know, it's already kind of a thick card, so it helps to keep the, the weight and the thickness down. And then just fold this over and not sure if you can see it, but the bottom of the front is a little bit open so that you can see your gates. Okay. All right. Now we're going to do some matting and some adhering and some other stuff like that. Now I have used for my gates, I'm using, my mats are all mossy meadow. And then for the gates, I use some of the new plush poinsettia uh, specialty DSP. Okay. Now I did a little experiment. Okay. I did an experiment for you. On this card, my um, sample, I used little dabs of liquid glue under the uh, embossed pieces, and it doesn't really show. It's pretty good. But I thought, I wonder, I wonder if there's a better way. Have you guys seen that commercial? <laughs> it's for some medicine. 
Do y'all remember, are y'all young enough to remember when medicine was not advertised on TV? Those were the good old days. But now they have some really, really bad commercials for medicine. And one of them is, I used to use, but then I wondered if there was a better way right around the corner. It's like, really? Come on, nobody talks like that. But I wondered if there was a better way to adhere this. So I've done two experiments. Okay, on this top piece here, you can see there's two pieces behind. It's very, very classy and professional. But here I used my fine tip glue pen because I thought, or my fine tip glue bottle. And I thought, boy, that would be really cool because it's clear. But can you see what it did there? It smushes. That, lit, that uh, fine tip glue is so thin that you can't hardly get not enough to make it squish out. So I don't really like that. But then, look here. This side, I used glue dots under the, in, the flocking. And you can maybe sort of see it right there, but not really. So I'm going to try glue dots on this one, and we're going to see what we get. Okay, and that experiment has been brought to you by somebody who cut that gate the wrong size. Something is not right with that size of gate envelope, gate mat. That gate mat just ain't right. That gate mat ain't right. Either that or my flocking ain't right. Because something ain't right right there. Nah, it seems like it ought to be right. I may be just a little bit short. We'll be okay. We'll be okay, Tammy. So I'm going to try with glue dots. What do you think? I like it. Let's try the glue dots. Hey, Barbara. Alrighty, let's see. So I'm going to stick these glue dots under my flocking. It's a flocking mess. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had to do it. I just had to. It was a requirement. Okay. I'm just gonna use a couple of three and I'll put one here under that little berry and another one under this little berry. And I think we'll be okay there. So let's try that. Oh yeah, see look, you can't you really can't even see those at all. So glue dots are the way to go with this, you guys. I'm thinking, I mean that's that's just me, but I would use glue dots because it's much easier to control exactly where they go. Even the white glue kind of spreads a little bit. And so that's kind of, you know, you can see it. You really actually can see it. You can tell yourself it's just a shadow, but it's not. It's glue. All right. And I'm going to put one mole. I know the glue dots are great. I like them. I love glue dots. Glue dots are like... The handiest thing ever. Have you guys noticed that when you put something on with a glue dot, it'll wiggle for a while and then you go back and try to wiggle that thing a couple hours later and it is completely solid. So it's like glue dots have this this little moment of time where you can you can play around with them if you needed to. Okay, now we'll go back to the liquid glue and put these on our gates. I like this, uh, isn't that pretty how the, um, how the, that flocked vellum, it's, that's what it is, is it's flocked vellum looks with the, the mossy meadow cardstock behind it. I like it. And you know, that's fun because you get three different, um, patterns in there. You've got the holly and then you've got the, um, poinsettia, which, oh, by the way, you can cut with the poinsettia die. So you can actually use a die cut and cut out some flocked poinsettias. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Now I did get a little bit busy with the glue right there. Speaking of bugs, I've got one bugging me. Okay, now is the time when we're gonna get busy designing, because I I, I don't, we're not doing this, but I'm not sure exactly what. So I have done a little bit of die cutting ahead of time and I've got my card front ready to go. Let me be sure I'm using the right piece. Yes, it's the smaller one. And we're going to use this. And I thought what we would do, I stamped my candles already in real red and I thought, and then I fussy cut them just 
the whole all together. When you get the uh, images, this is the image. All of three, all three of them are on the same stamp, so that's kind of handy. And I thought then what we would do is adhere those, maybe pop them on with dimensionals, and I've cut a whole bunch of foliage out of um, Mossy Meadow and also Pear Pizzazz. And I also stamped some berries in real red and cut them with the die. This is all die cutting, so that's kind of fun. And then I thought we would just build some, build us a little centerpiece like this. And that's why I said I wasn't really sure what we were making, because I have no idea how this is going to turn out. But I think, you know, what's the worst that could happen? It'll look like a centerpiece of candles, right? We'll put this behind, maybe. And then maybe uh, some like that. See how this is going to work out? I like it. I think it's going to be good. It won't be quite the same, but it will be close. And, you know... It's a little more doable, a little quicker, maybe a little less stepped up, but that's okay. Stepped up is not always the be all and end all, but it's gonna be all collage -y, and you know I like a good collage -y. Hey, Kathy, appreciate you joining. And we'll go like that, maybe some berries. I love that this has a very, very cute little um, little flame. You see this little flame doohickey right there? I, t I love that little flame, and I love how they made the notch out for the wick. Because you don't have to stamp a wick. It's there because your brain says there's a wick and a flame on it. And I like that. I just think it's kind of cool. I'm easily entertained. Apparently, I am easily entertained. All right. Now I did have some momentary thoughts that perhaps I ought to cut these candles apart and then, you know, layer them up and do all sorts of stuff like that. But I don't know that I think that's really necessary. Let's do that one right the right direction though. And that's going to that's too many. It's going to be too many if you do too many like that. Now, if I cut these apart, though, I could actually layer between them. But I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave them like they are. So let's go ahead and pop those on. Uh, I really like it, the collage. Yes, I like it, too. I think it's going to be fun. Okay, we're going to pop this on to the card front. And by this, I mean my... And what I'm going to do here... So here's a little trick. When you're not exactly sure what you're going to do and you want to pop something on, leave your dimensionals away from the edge of the die cut. Here's why. If I decide after I get this adhered that I want to slide some layering elements under it, like pine boughs, I have a much better shot of being able to do that if I have space here. Did that make sense to everybody? Okay. I hope it did. I'm thinking. Kathy Fennell, hey Lenny, thank you. All right. Yeah, I was piecing this morning and I thought, man, this is going to make people think, it's gonna make you think it's harder than it is because it's gonna, it would take the time it takes. You know what I mean? So I decided to pivot a little bit and do something similar, get the same kind of idea, but not with all of that. So I'm going to place that right there in the middle, like so. And then I think we'll, we can see, see by putting my dimensionals there, I can, I can just um, slide in behind it as I need to. Okay, so we're just gonna go crazy here and just build. I know those were mini dimensionals because it's what I had handy You'd think as organized as I try to be, and by try to be, I do mean try because I'm seldom successful, but I have all the tools to organize, and yet I just don't get it done the way it's supposed to be. I don't know why. I just don't know why. 
And let's see, let's put a pine bough there. And we'll put a pine bell like so. There we go. Okay. And let's see, let's do a pair of pizzazz pine bell. They were whole mini dimensionals. So are they really dimensionals? I don't know. Are they really whole? I just don't know. Okay, now I thought it Maybe it would be fun if we had a little bit of gold, a little bit of goldness. I'm going to open this up. This is the um, gold trim that comes with the Wonder of the Season combo pack. So you get this and a couple other ribbons. You get one in shaded spruce. I think that's it's two together like this so you get both of these very wide not wide but of course my hardest part with any ribbon anybody with me is getting that pea picking cellophane off of there there we go okay so I think what I'll do here is I'm gonna tie a bow the bows are always a good layering piece, right? Just tie a simple bow like that. And we can have some like so. There we go. I'm not sure how to use the wide ribbon. Yeah, I'm not either yet. That's it's quite wide. It's quite wide. I'll figure it out. We'll figure out something, Karen, between us. And we'll put, maybe, maybe put that right there like that. And then do a little layering over the top. Maybe some top layering. A little bit of top layering. Like that. And then maybe a All right, I gotta do some. I gotta do some laying out here, not laying out to get a tan. Remember when that was cool? <laughs> that is so not cool anymore, is it? No, nobody lays out to get a tan, do they? I mean, is that even a thing people even do anymore? <sighs> I don't think so. Of course, did y'all see the? Um, who is it? The director of the CDC got on the other day and said that. We could be done with COVID in eight to 10 weeks if everybody wore a mask. Hello, people, let's wear a mask. I mean, I would think somebody would know, like him, somebody like him would know whether that was a thing or not. Wouldn't you think? I mean, just throwing that out there. All right, let's see if we can get some more of these going. Oh, I'm starting to see it. It's starting to come. It's starting to come into focus. Focus, focus. Maybe I don't want to cover that. Maybe I don't want to cover that like that. Maybe we'll do kind of like the same across there, like so. Yeah, it's starting to come into my head. Are you seeing it, people? Then others say masks don't even work. Don't know what. Well, you know what? Oh, you're right. Stay home is absolutely the best. I got it. But I saw a thing, and yes, it was on Good Morning America, so, you know, whatever. Take it for what it's worth. But they did an experiment, and they showed people with um, different kinds of masks on and no mask, and the classic mask comes to the top of your upper lip and then leaves your nose open, and you could see the exhalations in the, in the video, and it's crazy. People who wear a mask are actually stopping the outflow. And then they were saying if you have a mask with a, um, with a filter in it of some sort, then, then you're also protecting yourself. So they're saying that you're protecting others by wearing a mask and you can protect yourself more by wearing a mask with a filter. So... You know, obviously, and they also say, and also stay away from people. So 
you know, that social distancing is like the biggest thing right there. All right, I think I want, I'm not sure I'm loving that, but I think it's coming together. It's trying to come together. The other piece is, is I did actually cut a third berry. Where are you? There he is. There's my third berry. Not berry, B-A-R-R-Y, because there's no other berries here at all. There's no berries here at all. Maybe we'll put this berry down here. Mm -hmm. And a pine bough, like so. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a strip. We'll have a strip. You know why I keep saying that? It's because I want it to jump out at me. And we're going to put a sentiment like that. Hmm. Well, we'll see how that's going to work out. I'm not sure. If they're opening up so I know I don't even know I'm I'm I don't know about the schools either I don't know about the schools either I really don't know it's it I'm not gonna lie it's a little exhausting actually it's a lot exhausting it's a very lot exhausting and I may turn this okay let's go ahead and stamp a sentiment so that we've got that to go by. And I'm going to use the all is calm, all is bright. I thought that was very pretty, very pretty. And since it's gonna be right over the candles, unlike on my sample, I'm going to use um, Mossy Meadow as my sentiment. And let me pull this to me, guys, just so that I can line it up. This is a half inch wide strip and I'm centering so that I can play with it a little bit if I need to. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I think there are a lot of people. Mmm, Sue, so, yeah. I, I don't, Julie, and you're right. I don't, Julie, I don't know. I don't know. And yes, Sue, I'm certain that if you work at the at the schools, it's exhausting because it's the not knowing piece is the hardest piece of it of all, really. If somebody would, if there was a decision, the part that gets me is that there, I'm not, I don't know if I could say, and the right answer is, I just, I just don't think anybody can say that right now. Um, but maybe maybe I'm missing something. Obviously, I am not a doctor, but um, I just don't see how you can, how are you gonna get kids to wear a mask and stay away from each other? I, I don't really actually think that's a thing. Okay, what I just did there was kind of change up the orientation of the bow. Okay, that's what we're gonna do right there. I'm gonna leave this in place as I as I adhere my parts, my pieces and my parts. And we're gonna do that with some liquid glue. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I understand the kids need to be in school. They need to be in school for various reasons, not, not just learning, not just to save the parents from killing themselves um, and or their children, but because of that social piece, you know, that's where kids learn to be social, I think, is at school. And so they, they need that, but they're not going to be very social if they're dead. So, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm glad I don't have kids that I have to worry about it. I'm glad I'm in a place where I can just say, you know, I'm staying home. I'm just staying home. Bye. Y'all do your thing. I'm staying home. Okay, so I'm just really kind of adhering these where I think they look good. And I'm gonna leave the berries off for just a second because I may pop those with some dimensionals. Yeah, try to keep, co co that's right, what? Oh, Orange County. <laughs> I was like, orange, we have no orange. There's no orange on here. I don't see any orange. Um, yeah, I, there's no way to keep kids from touching each other, I don't think. I mean, anybody who's ever had a phone call from a school that says your kid has head lice knows there's no way to keep kids from touching each other. That's how they roll. 
it's just how they roll. So, um, yeah. I do not envy teachers. I, if I was a teacher, I'm not sure what my answer would be. I, I don't know. If they called and said it's time to go back to school, I'm not sure I know what my answer would be. So, again, I'm glad... I'm glad that's not the row I have to hoe. We'll put a little more glue on there. Aren't you guys so glad you came on the video so we could talk about COVID-19? Because you can't get enough of that during the day, right? Yeah, I'm going to stop right now. Stopping it at once. That's it. No more. No more talk about that. All right, and we're just kind of building, and this is really truly kind of how I do collages, although I'm going to admit it usually takes me a lot longer than I'm spending because I don't want you to be here while I hem and haw. I do a lot of hemming and hawing, not going to lie. I, I hem and haw with the best of them. Yep, I do. Let's see, I need another, surely, surely I have another pair of pizzazz. Well, that's okay. I'll just put a, he can have a, he can have a mossy meadow pine bough. That's okay. Just help me make my decision to get it or not. Definitely get it. It is a cool set. I love, I do love it. And I loved the way the other card turned out. Um, I just didn't think it was really great for a video. Okay. So that's how we're going to do that. And then I'm going to put my little bow, and I think I am going to little fight it a little bit. little fight it. And we're going to put it just like that. And I'm going to do that with a glue dot. Have I mentioned recently how much I love glue dots? I do love glue dots. Okay, here we go. And we're going to put it right there. And I actually don't mind if it ends up overlapping my sentiment. I kind of like how that rolls. Okay, and then we'll put a berry here, and I'm going to put a berry there. Put a berry here, and put a berry there, and I'm going to put a berry there with a glue dot like that, that I have adhered right directly to my flowers. Those aren't flowers, those are leaves. And then I'm putting that right there like that, and then I'm going to move it because the glue dot is a visible because the glue dot is a visible. So just so you know, if you're gonna watch real time creating, you're gonna see things that have to be fixed because that's how it rolls, right? That's just how we roll. And then we'll put one here. Yeah, that's good. We'll put a little glue right there and slide that berry in there, creating a little depth, hold it down for a second. Yes, I do have quite, do I always talk to myself when I'm working? No, because there's nobody here listening. Mm -mm, no, you guys are just, yeah, I mean, you could obviously just hit stop and go away, but right now I am totally rambling to you. Sometimes I talk when I'm with, by myself, to myself, but it's usually because I'm saying, oh, you dork, of course that wasn't going to work. What were you thinking? Things like that. All right, let's go like that. I'm going to put a glue dot under that large berry. These are all minis, just so you know. And I do believe this will probably end up being the card I blog tomorrow, as opposed to the more complicated one. And then I'll just show a picture of the, of the notched up one like that. Okay. So now, I'm just going to, on my, I did a fun little banner doohickey here on my, sample. Can you see that I have done some folding here to make it more like a banner? I'm not going to do that on this one because that's that would be a weird dimension um, because the folds would be right under where the candles are. So I'm not going to do that. You do like this card better? Aw, thank you. That's Maybe that's true. I do actually talk to myself, but maybe I don't do it quite as out loud. Actually, can I just say, usually Finn is under the table, so maybe I'm talking to him. 
So far, he hasn't really answered. He mostly just sighs heavily like, God, would you be quiet? I'm trying to sleep down here. All right, I'm just snipping a banner end on both ends of my little strip. Very, very scientific. And I'm gonna just slide it in just like that. So let's go ahead and put a glue dot under the ends to support it like a, this. And then we'll slide it in there and maybe use a little bit of liquid glue. A little bit of liquid glue, just to help it. They say intelligent people talk to themselves. Well, <laughs> I'm extraordinarily intelligent. <laughs> Okay, here we go. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and straighten this up so that I have some shot of this being straight. We'll raise it just a little bit, not very much, just a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty straight. And give that a little touch down. Okay, now I'm gonna add my little Daffodil Delight flames my flames flame on you guys remember what that movie is flame on pretty sure it's the fantastic four okay so you can see the wicks i'm just going to line up this little photopolymer flame right above the top and i'm stamping it in daffodil delight because everybody knows flames are daffodil delight just like that Boom, chakalaka. Okay, now I'll adhere it to my mat. And you can see I've left my gold. I don't need Mary. TV when Mary's on. Yes, Mary is her own television show. Mm -hmm. Not sure if that's good, but it is what it is, right? Now, this is a mossy meadow mat. And there we go. Yes, I'm liking how this is turning out, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, and then I'm gonna use more liquid glue. Not gonna use dimensionals here because we've got plenty of thickness with the card itself. And I've popped that candle up. So I'm just gonna keep it a little under control. The tiniest bit under control it's got a lot of go a lot going on but i'm keeping it a little bit under control okay now would you guys embellish this with like i don't know some red rhinestones i don't know think what you think while that dries and we make an inside let's do an inside shall we i'm going to use another sentiment and this one also from sweetest time this says bright and peaceful wishes to you this christmas which i thought was very sweet and we'll use a mossy meadow again. It's like a comedy show. Mm -hmm. I'm my own one person comedy show. <laughs> yes, and I think I'm just so stinking funny. Okay, there we go. And then I think we'll do some more candles on the bottom in real red love this stamp set. I love photopolymer stamp sets. Let's be sure I don't have anything weird on there. And I'm just going to center this underneath my sentiment like that. Okay. And you know what? While I have it out, let's just go ahead and do our envelope. Our envelope. We'll make an envelope in exactly the same way. Come back here, candles. I like the white rather than blinging. Okay, no rhinestone. Maybe, you know what I do have? I'll show you when I get done with the, these stampings. Okay, I'm just gonna stamp this in the center of my envelope. And then I'm going to turn it around and do the same to the flapper, to the flapper. The flapper. Okay. And then I'm going to set that aside to get good and dry. Close this red. <laughs> well, hey, 
if it's just an audience of one Sue, that's good enough, right? And then I'm just kind of wiping that because, you know, red, see, red is with the darker colors. Sometimes it takes it a minute to dry, and I do not want to run, run anything. Alrighty, and maybe some flames. So, a flame? How about a flame? We need a flame. We need a flame. Thank you, honeybee. It's turning out okay for something kind of on the fly, yeah. There we go. And let's see, we'll do some flames on the envelope. You know what's amazing is that I, so far, and knock on wood, somebody knock on wood for me right quick. I'm stamping these straight. It doesn't look like there's a giant draft in the room. Hold your breath, I've only got two more to go. There we go. And there we go. Oh! Ooh. All right. Now on my sample, I added some holly next to the candles. So let's go ahead and do that again. And I'm using Mossy Meadow and Pear Pizzazz. I know it. It's amazing that the flames are all straight. I mean, seriously amazing, actually. Okay, I'm using, these are um, holly leaves from the stamp set. And I'm just gonna stamp them next to the candles. We'll just do them all at once. And I think I'll wipe this block off. So I've only got one little space spot to have to erase with my Tombow eraser. Okay. And that is it for the Pear Pizzazz lifts. And then I'm going to use a sm the smaller leaf. Oh, thank you, Barbara. That is sweet. But very kind. Very kind. All right, so a smaller leaf, and I'm using my Mossy Meadow, which, oh, by the way, if you're wondering why it's so light, is because it really needs to be inked, and I just haven't done it. But I, ah! Oh, well, it'll be okay. Maybe I can erase it. Let's see if I can erase it. If not, I'm going to abort on the, I don't think that's gonna erase. But nobody said that this one had to be identical to the others, so perhaps we have some additional leaves. I'm just playing now, guys, because I'm trying to I'm trying to salvage my envelope. Now, here's the real one. Let's see what we can do here. Hang on, wait for it, wait for it. Berries, real red, hang on. That's right, there's more. If this was a card, I would stick a rhinestone on there. Let's see, let's wipe that down just a little bit. It's going everywhere. And we're done. This is God saying, stop with the envelope, Mayor. Stop with the envelope. Okay, so let's go ahead and adhere this to our mat for our inside. And then we'll stick it in the card. I know, all the breath holding, all the breath holding did not affect it. So I will have to make my envelope a Dean. That's okay. 
Fortunately, it's a long time till Christmas. I've got time. Okay. And then let's get our gate card coming out here. And use a little more liquid glue. I love Real Red and Mossy Meadow together, and I really like the addition of the Pear Pizzazz. That's a nice, kind of a nice change from Old Olive, which would also work, but I like the Pear Pizzazz as well. Very pretty. Okay, and there we go. Now look, look, look. Close that up. Give these a snip. like so. And look at these embellishments I have. What, thank you. These are all the trimmings embellishments. And these are flat. They're not shiny. What do you think? A star? A little white? You know what? I'm leaving it. I like it just the way it is. I am not messing with it. Now, if I had done a good job with my envelope, this is how this would look. There we go. And you have a Dutch door gate card that you can do simply with die cuts from the Sweetest Borders die set and sentiments and images from the Sweetest... Where did my stamp set go? Sweetest Time stamp set. Or you can use the more complex die, die cut it twice, once in Mossy Meadow, once in Pear Pizzazz, Put the mossy meadow piece, adhere it to your card front after you have stamped your candles, and then piece in with liquid glue and the pear pizzazz negative spaces, you can piece that right in. So two cards, oh man, it is a toss up, but I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like this one. I, I like this one a lot. What do you guys think? So I appreciate you taking the time to sit with me while I meander my way through the, this card. And I appreciate you, uh, if you made it over here to YouTube from my aborted start on Facebook, thank you so much for that. But speaking of Facebook, I hope I'll see you at seven o'clock on Saturday evening on my Stamps and Lingers Facebook page. Y'all have a great rest of the week and see you in a couple of days. Thanks so much, bye-bye.